Hi students, how are you? I'm hoping that uh, you all are fine there. Yeah. Okay, students, today I am going to talk about uh, chapter three. Um, chapter three title is um, Audit of uh, Limited Liability Companies so, as per the Company Act number seven of 2007. As I told you in the handout of number two, chapter two, so this should be the third handout. Today I'm going to uh, explain uh, things from the uh, company egg number seven two thousand seven, especially related to the the audit. Audit mean external audit or financial statement audit. Uh, when I discuss about the chapter two, the um, in the introduction part, I I. I'm told that uh, the particular audit is uh, going to say the audit uh, mostly implicate uh, external audit or company audit or financial statement audit. So the particular audit is uh, governed by or directed by the three set of rules and regulations. Uh, what are those uh, three set of rules? The first one, the company act or company law. That's uh, the, the first thing, the so company act or company law. Uh, that's a point. Uh, the today lectures I'm going to explain. So what are the arrangements? So what the conditions are there under the Company Act uh, in relation to the uh, audit of uh, limited liability companies? So the second condition or second uh, rules uh, should be the uh, Code of Conduct or Code of Ethics, and third one the auditing standards. No? So in the coming um, handouts, we will discuss about uh, the two one. So today let's just uh, I'm going to clearly explain um, about this company act uh, and the company act uh, the, what are the requirements are um, listed uh, in relation to the audit of limited liability companies so now I'm going to uh, share my uh, screen for the purpose of getting PowerPoint uh, so here yes I have that PowerPoint for each chapter. This should be the third chapter. I hope you already watch uh, the previous uh, lecture videos. Uh, another important information, students, if you have any questions or queries regarding this particular chapters, so you can uh, raise your questions or you can text your questions in the chatting session already scheduled uh, from 10:50 p.m. for one hour. So every day I check that particular chat room, but uh, no one writes a question. So if you have any questions, so it doesn't matter whether difficult or easy questions, but if you have any doubts, definitely you can uh, place your question, put your question in the particular chat uh, room. Okay, students, um, this, should, this is the uh, chapter three. Uh, so chapter three, audit of limited liability companies, according to the company eight number seven of two thousand seven. Uh, I don't need to tell you too many information about the company eight. Uh, all of you are very familiar with the company eight. So now I am. What I am going to do? I am going to explain what are the arrangements are uh, there uh, under the particular company eight regarding the audit of limited liability companies. So the first we can see the learning outcomes or learning objective. So in this kind of only one learning objective that is the identify the provisions so uh, provisions or um, arrangements uh, related to audit under the new company act number so 2007. Yes. The first one actually prepare this handout based on the Particular company, the, the already two ones you can download that particular company. The, the 450 pages are there. Uh, actually, already I uploaded uh, that um, company uh, PDF in LMS. So, if you want to get more idea about this company, definitely you can refer the particular document. Uh, so, here just I got the, the important information from the act and then summarize in four pages. Kind of. Okay, students, the first one that we should know the qualification of an auditor. So the when we talk about the audit or when we talk about the auditor, especially the external auditor, external auditor. Uh, so the first thing, first thing we should know 
uh, what are the qualification of an auditor so the company act uh, says uh, clearly says uh, the, 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 the qualifications are clearly said in the company so particular case qualification of an auditor in terms of section 157 subsection 1 so uh, the, actually you don't need to remember this uh, section number and some subsection uh, just uh, enough to know the, what are the arrangements are uh, listed under the company act so when we talk about a uh, qualification the company act clearly says the person who shall be appointed to act as uh, auditor should be a uh, first rank member of institute of chartered accountants of sri lanka ca sri lanka the person should be a member of uh, ca sri lanka yes so other one registered auditor or registered auditor please uh, the, uh, keep in your mind that this, this is this is very important so you want to function or practice as an auditor in sri lanka for the public companies plz or quoted companies or listed companies <clears throat> what are the qualification you should have uh, you should be a member of ca sri lanka so once you complete uh, ca sri lanka uh, then you have to uh, show some work, work experience uh, i think that uh, you have to have three years experience working experience in the commercial organizations or industry so then you can get a membership license so the first one or otherwise the second qualification so otherwise or registered auditor okay then the qualification to be considered to become a registered auditor is as follows that's a section that's a confusion is there so the, the as per the company act uh, section 157 subsection 1 says the qualification come in the two format two form the first one the person should be a C member of C S Sri Lanka second one person should be the registered auditor or C member of C S Sri Lanka or registered auditor so the when we say, when we when we can, you know, try to understand what's the meaning of registered auditor that's a confusion so the, this is the problem is this tiny tiny change so because the, the generally we, we we will discuss about this one it's a meaning of registered auditor then. so the, the company act uh, you can um, clearly check the company act the company act also they just say that these two information the, under the particular uh, title qualification of an auditor the company act only they mention the person should be a member of CA Sri Lanka or registered auditor but when you write to understand what's the meaning of registered auditor what are the other things are there but you couldn't find those information because the company had to act uh, the, that information is not available so even if you can check those information some other other professional courses uh, wt or some other um, uh, study pack i got these things from the wt so the, the wt study pack they uh, mentioned some qualifications under the registered auditor but it, it, this is not a exact one because it's a time to time uh, it may be changed so the, then you can uh, if you want to know this information what's the meaning of registered auditor what are the qualifications uh, what are the people come under the registered auditor you want to know you can get to know those information in the particular website uh, the government information center so the as per the particular uh, information you can see that clearly says that when you say the registered auditor the person should be a member of or should be a should be a, the person should complete the hnda you know the hnd accountancy that is a purely the accountancy provision so the person completed the hnda also the person uh, show some working experience the person also uh, function as auditor through the registered auditor or well, another option they mention in the particular website for the retired pensioner what does it mean retired pensioner retired pensioner otherwise they didn't mention any information just they mentioned the retired pensioner so the all the people all the people who are working in the government sector after they retired after 55 or 60 years so all are the 
prepare the pension yes no? most of the people normal people have the pension so the there is no any further information about the prepare pension no? so that's a little bit confusion so but uh, the time to time it may be maybe change we should accept it uh, but i try i try to get uh, those information but i couldn't be uh, able to get those information exact information but uh, the earlier uh, the earlier time they mentioned uh, the qualification to be considered to become a registered auditor so this uh, some qualification they mentioned to become a registered auditor what are those uh, qualification the, for example being a retired member of sri lanka accounting service yes person uh, after retired from the accounting service person uh, becomes a registered auditor so otherwise for example retired member of sri lanka audit service yes that person also can function as registered auditor otherwise uh, being a retired assessor of inland revenue department yes so the being a holder of the high national diploma in accountancy okay so, so in addition to this one so the people who completed the other provisional courses except cs sri lanka uh, person may have cma or cpa or acc whatever the provisional courses those people also um, come under the registered auditor this is at early before i, I remember before two years I got information from the WH study group, but now the it, it was changed. Uh, but I try to the communicate number of uh, professional people, but those people also have a clear idea about this matter. It's okay, you no problem to uh, keep in your mind. Uh, this may be changed time to time. Uh, the latest one they mention only the HMBA holder. Those are the Retired uh, uh, government retired pension. Okay, so that's, that's not a big matter. So then, the, this is the arrangement under the section 157 qualification of an auditor. Please remember the person may be the member of uh, CSI Lama or registered auditor. Uh, the, go through these two ways, people can um, function as auditor of a particular firms or institutions. Yes. Then the key point you mentioned here, key point, the first point uh, says, uh, denote that the member of CSA should be appointed to act as an auditor of any company. This is important. So the, the qualification, the qualification is a CA uh, member, the person can able to uh, function as auditor for all companies. All companies mean I hope you have some idea about the company type of companies, different types are there. So that uh, CA member, or the once a person completed uh, CA Sri Lanka and also the person have uh, required uh, experience, then person can able to practice as an auditor for all types of companies, public companies or PLC or private companies, PVT or company limited by guarantee, offshore companies or whatever the types. But second point is denotes, however, a registered auditor, second one, could be appointed to act as an auditor of a private company or a company limited by guarantee only. This is important one, keep in your mind. So the, the second, this is a key point, so is the first point so is the CA member, the person function as auditor for all types of companies, including public companies. But the second point says that uh, the registered auditor, the person role is limited only to uh, other companies except public company. It means this registered auditor cannot uh, practice as an auditor for a public companies, PLC, so listed companies or corporate companies. Okay, yes. So then the other section 157 sub uh, section 3 the disqualification of an auditor. In the, in the previous slides, we discussed the qualification of an auditor. So this one is a disqualification of an auditor. For the people cannot be function as an auditor. Disqualification. Yes, the following persons may not be appointed or act as an auditor of company. Now, who are those people? Who are the people cannot function as an auditor? For a firm a company the first one say director or employee of the company yes that is a under this obviously 
underscore type no? because the present and auditor we just the first step the first step to be discussed for the principal auditors and auditor with the independent one independent examination so keep it keep, keep those information in your mind the company clearly says the particular section disqualification of an auditor the particular director the board of directors or employee of the company cannot be cannot function as an auditor yes this is because it creates some problem yes the person the employee then when is the auditor then it's because it's not nice because it it, it will be questioned the um, independence the objectivity of the particular process for it so that's a good one second one a person who is a partner of or in the employment of a director sometimes the particular person uh, has some business agreement with the particular company you know, or the person who is a partner of the company you know, the partners no yes this is a very popular in order to accumulate huge amount of capital the two three people join together then they start a business so if they have a, if the person is a partner the person cannot function as audit of the particular same company or in the employment of a director sometimes the particular person may have some relationship with the director of the company due to some um, project work or due to some project they may have something to do this project particular person has some relationship with the company director so that people also cannot function so because they have some relations um, connection with the company so that, that, that's what uh, it, will, it, will, it will not be not fair so that's why those people also cannot function as auditor for the same company so they can function as auditor for another company okay yes third one a liquidator is a term i hope you heard about the term liquidator you might have studied in the whole level of like commerce so uh, yes actually or administrator or a person who is a receiver in respect of the property of the company you know the word point is very important the liquidator term means for administrator the liquidator means when the company become insolvency you know the particular firm become insolvency what does it mean insolvency so insolvency says that when the firm or particular organization um, is unable to settle their debt by using their assets you know the assets and liabilities are there and the liabilities increase than the assets and the particular situation the company particular firm unable to uh, pay off or settle they are, they are due by using the current assets situation is uh, called as insolvency 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 company is in the position of insolvency mm, so otherwise they use a term as another term bankruptcy so that particular situation uh, what happened so because of public company's point of view so when company the particular situation the, the investors the um, the file a case in the particular courts the courts uh, actually they uh, appoint particular person the person is a liquidator for what purpose the courts appoint a particular person liquidator in order to settle the company uh, due in the in the priority basis the first two who the first uh, they settled the but they are due to these people then, then at last um, the, the, at, at the last lastly the audit shareholders if the balance is there they can be able to get their investment uh, so that's a way that's a the particular courts appoint the person the person is called a liquidator so the liquidator also whatever the way the person uh, connect with the particular company so otherwise administrators yes the administrator also they may have an interest in the company so those people also cannot function as um, auditor so otherwise a person who is a receiver in respect to the property of the company so that person uh, is expected to receive some property from the particular company so the particular person you know function as auditor to the same company so these are the things uh, given under the particular company act section 157 subsection 3 under the title disqualification auditor the last one uh, body corporate this is also some difficult uh, new word for you all so the body corporate means you know the company that i heard i heard you get about a term the consolidated companies so the group of companies no yes the subsidiary parent company that kind of situation is there 
so the, the particular body also the corporate body also kind of function as auditor because sometimes it may lead to with the audit of the, the um, parent company uh, maybe the auditor of the subsidiary so it will create that kind of situation that's why the body corporate also kind of function as auditor under the particular age section to the same company and the companies they can do it okay now so the key point is, says uh, the a person who hold any of these revert to one two and three above yeah yeah under the disqualification we discuss four types of uh, people or the things uh, cannot function as audit so the key point says the person who hold any of these refer to one two and three above may not be appointed yes so we, are, uh, we discussed in the previous slide under the disqualification those four people or four people cannot function as auditor because it is same company this key point says that those uh, may not be appointed or act as an auditor for company for a period of two years please keep in your mind don't think that for a longer period then they cannot function as auditor but just for two years after such person has left all that office. This is very important at some point of view. Definitely, this is very important things you should clearly understand. So it is under the disqualification of an auditor, uh, the particular company act uh, section 57 uh, says uh, that four points, uh, four uh, people or the four things uh, cannot uh, four types of uh, disqualification so the key point says the company itself says those four types of people or the things cannot function as auditor uh, but depend on the activity suppose uh, a particular employee of a company left the firm after that uh, after two years and they could then person uh, function as auditor to the same company. Suppose if the person joined in the audit company, person left the job and then joined in the another audit firm. So this person, uh, after two years from the uh, from when the person leave from the company, after two years this person can uh, audit to the particular same company after two years. So director, so the person is uh, resigned the job from the date of uh, resign the job for two years. The person cannot function as auditor for the same company if suppose if the person joined in the audit team audit company as an audit member i hope you understood no so don't think that uh, um, um, for a longer period it will because the possibility is there so they have to leave the job they have to resign the job once they resign the job for two years for two years only they cannot function as auditor if they left the job, leave the resign the job, so then they join in the particular audit firm. So then after two years, uh, this particular employee or director or the body corporate or whatever it is a liquidator, they can function as audit to the same company, two years company. Only for the two years. Okay, now two years. Then we are going to uh, discuss the another section 159, appointment of first auditor. That is important. First auditor highlighted here the first auditor so the what's the meaning of first auditor you know the each and every public companies the audit is mandatory so they have to appoint the auditor so the, the this uh, section going to section is going to explain the what are the conditions of this uh, appointment of first auditor because what is the meaning of first auditor it may be the newly established company so the first time they are going to appoint the auditor so that's what is a the section says the first auditor what are the conditions are there the first point says the first auditor of a company yeah, may be may be appointed by the board of directors i think you know already we discussed so what's the name of board of directors what they are what, what kind of force they perform everything clearly discussed so the this point says the first auditor of a company may be appointed by the board of directors before the first annual general meeting so keep in your mind the first time the first chapter when we discuss about these things what i said the auditor of the particular company can be appointed by the uh, owners so equity shareholders of the 
company in the annual general meeting. What this point says, now we are telling you about the first story too. So we may be appointed by the board of directors. Yes, why? They show the first annual general meeting. You know that when you establish companies, so when the first annual general meeting normally happens after 12 months, no? the company finance, the starting of the financial year is January to December. So then the annual general meeting, they can expect the meeting uh, the next three three months. So this only can be done in March. So the finance year is April to March. So we can expect the annual general meeting to be held within uh, May, June, July. The three months, uh, additional they can take the three months to conduct the annual general meeting. So that, that's what is uh, impossible to appoint the auditor by the because when you look at established company, they need the auditor, the first auditor. So the possibility is there the, that the first auditor can be appointed, may be appointed uh, by the board of directors until they have the uh, AGM, annual general meeting. So here, yeah, the first auditor of a company may be appointed by the board of directors before the first annual general meeting. And if so appointed, will hold office until the conclusion of the AGM. Yes, of course, if they appointed the, the particular auditor, auditor is appointed by the board of directors, the first auditor, the person um, will hold office work until the conclusion of the AGM. So they, they, have, they will have, they will, they may have their first AGM, annual general meeting, definitely in the annual general meeting, the old owners or other shareholders or equity shareholders definitely they will decide the auditor. So sometimes they decide they 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 may decide uh, they may they may be decided to go with the uh, early auditor. Early auditor mean the auditor um, which appointed by the auditor who appointed by the board of directors. So suppose if they are audited, if the majority of the owners or the shareholders are not happy with the appointment. Definitely they will change the person. Keep in your mind, this is very important. No? So MCU actions, so examiner, they ask MCQ types of actions, so the structure types of actions from this part. So don't try to memorize, just try to understand what, 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 what the particular things are uh, mentioned in the particular section. So this section, uh, appointment of first auditor, clearly understand, now I'm talking about the first auditor appointment. That is normally applicable to the newly established company. Okay. Newly established company. Okay. Okay. The first order of a company may be appointed, may be appointed by the board of directors, company board of directors, before the annual general meeting. If so, appointed. What happened? The person will work until the conclusion of the, the annual general meeting. Okay. Second point says. If the board doesn't appoint an auditor, so if the first auditor, board failed to appoint the auditor, the company shall appoint the first auditor at a meeting of the company. So then the chance goes to the company, company meeting, they can decide. Okay. Third point says, neither the board nor the company shall appoint the first auditor. If both item, they fail. The, but the first point is the board of directors they can they may they can appoint the auditor. Suppose if they fail to appoint, the chance goes to the company meeting. The company meeting they can appoint. So in the second chance also they fail to appoint the auditor. What happened? Either the board nor the company shall appoint the first auditor. Yes, if an agreed or common resolution is passed by the shareholders that no auditor be appointed. So the particular situation in the board to the previous two, the atom they fail to appoint the auditor, fail to mean the board of directors also fail to appoint the auditor, then company meeting uh, the itself they fail to, uh, in the company meeting also they fail to appoint the auditor. So what happened then, either the board nor the company shall appoint the first auditor, if an agreed or common resolution is passed by the shareholders that no auditor be appointed, then the shareholders uh, is an agreement common, the common the agreement is passed by the shareholders that no auditor is appointed. Yes, such a resolution ceases to have effect the commencement of the first annual general meeting. Suppose the, this something happened 
So what is uh, the origin, what this uh, owners or the shareholders do, they normally passed a common resolution. Uh, in the common resolution, they mentioned uh, no OJB appointment. That kind of decision, that's a common resolution, no, the agreed a common agreed or common resolution means they are the, this they passed a decision. They make a decision that no OJB appointment. It's a very serious issue. So definitely such a resolution ceases to have effect at the commencement of them. So they will um, they, they will have the discussion about this common decision uh, in the first annual junction meeting AG. Okay now this is a these are the information given under the section 159 about appointment of first auditor people you know first auditor. So next one uh, says the appointment of auditor after the first audit. Earlier one, the appointment of very first newly uh, new auditor appointment, the first appointment for the newly established companies. So this is one says section 154 says appointment of auditor after the first audit the the um, subsequent auditor, second or third or fourth auditor. So what the company X says, what the section says, the company shall at each annual general meeting appoint an auditor to hold office from the conclusion of that next annual general meeting until the conclusion of the next one. This can normally happen. The every year they appoint an auditor to hold office from the concept because the, each and every year uh, they normally uh, do the same things. No? The first one say appoint a particular auditor. So it doesn't mean each and every year they change the auditor. It doesn't mean so. If the owners or if the equity shareholders, if they want to replace the auditor, they can do it. Otherwise, if the particular auditor maximum five years, they can have the same auditor, one auditor for their audit purpose. We will discuss those things in the next hand of code of conduct. What happened after they they have the particular same auditor for a longer period, what kind of uh, issues, problem will happen. We will discuss clearly in the next handout uh, the code of conduct or code of ethics. So this uh, company and the company act section 154 says company shall at each annual general meeting appoint an auditor to hold office from the conclusion of the next annual general meeting until the conclusion of the next. So because uh, it is normally continued. Uh, directors can fill a threshold. This is normally happens. Suppose uh, during the period, so the so no, normally the casual vacancy happen. What does it mean? Casual vacancy. The casual vacancy means something suddenly happen, uncertainty. We didn't think that will happen. So that's a something suddenly happen, uncertainty because uh, casual vacancy normally happen due to the death of the particular origin. Yes. What to do? What can we do? We didn't expect, no? So the re resignation of auditor, this was normally the developed country. So this is um, often happened because uh, sometimes the uh, auditor uh, resigned the job. So what to do? So this is uh, the during the between the uh, period in the in the in the, in the between because this uh, because they, they had to wait uh, to appoint another auditor. Uh, until the annual general meeting. This happened in the mid part of the year. The first part, during the first part, or second part, or third part. So that is called as casual vacancy. So if, the, if there is casual vacancy arise, what happened? Directors can fill the casual vacancy. Casual vacancy time also, the company directors, they can fill the casual vacancy. Mean they can appoint the auditor uh, because of this casual vacancy. Casual vacancy mean? They are supposed the uh, death of the auditor or the resignation of the auditor. So the registrar, this is another chance is actually normally goes to registrar. Registrar may appoint an auditor under the below conditions. So the registrar also sometimes uh, uh, has rights to rights to appoint the auditor under what conditions? Two conditions are there. The first one, at an annual general meeting of a company, no auditor is appointed or real. Yes. So the, wh 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 what I said earlier, so during the annual general meeting, the auditor, the owners or shareholders of the company, they appoint the auditor. 
suppose there is an annual return meeting of a company, no auditor is attending. What do you think? This may happen. This may normally happen. It may happen. There's a chance or probability, possibility to happen. So the the only the owner on the during the annual general meeting, owners or even the shareholders fail to attend it because some confusion uh, may arise there. Because uh, there is no majority. Because uh, some 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 people say uh, they want to appoint Ernst and Chung as an auditor. Another group of uh, owners or even the shareholders want to appoint the KPMG. Another set of group. Another set of uh, or the shareholders or owners want to appoint Deloitte or some other people want to appoint local auditors. So the confusion, different people have different ideas. So how, how, how to come to the conclusion? So that could normally happen at the time that normally the original government auditors happen to reappoint at the time that company registrar uh, has the right to appoint the board. Second one, a casual vacancy in the office of auditor is not filled within um, one month of the occurring of such vacancy. Please remember, so casual, suppose casual vacancy arrived. So the casual vacancy in the office of auditor is not filled within one month of the occurring such vacancy. Casual vacancy arrives, then from the particular date of arising the casual vacancy within one month. Within 30 or 30 days or 31 days, the, the directors of the company they should appoint the auditor. But if they fail to appoint, fill the casual vacancy. And the, under the particular situation, also, the company register has a right to appoint the auditor. Please keep in your mind. No? Next one, the key point says, the company shall, within five working days, give written notice to the registrar of the fact that the registrar is entitled to appoint an auditor. Since the previous slide, this slide, we discussed, when we talk about the appointment of auditor after the first auditor, no, it means the subsequent auditors. So there are some conditions are there. Normally the auditors can be appointed by the uh, only shareholders or equity shareholders or owners uh, at the annual general meeting. Yes. Suppose casual vacancy arrangement to happen, so normally the board directors they can appoint the auditor. Suppose board directors uh, fail to appoint the auditor, the time registrar can appoint the auditor. Otherwise, in the annual general meeting, the only shareholders fail to appoint the auditor. In the particular situation also, the registrar of the company can appoint the auditor. But uh, when we talk about the registrar appointment, the particular condition is there. The company shall within five working days give written notice, written notice to the registrar of the fact related to that matter that the registrar of, is entitled to appoint auditor. Within five working days, they have to communicate with the registrar in the written form, not a verbal or not oral, through written form, they have to. The communicate with the register, then only the register is entitled to appoint an auditor. This normally happens within five working days, five weekdays. Okay, now, yes. So, the key point other one says in terms of section 158 of the act, an auditor of a company, uh, other than first auditor appointed under section 159, shall be deemed to be reappointed at an annual general meeting of the company. Yes, that's normally uh, everybody know, no? So because of the maximum, the particular auditor can be appointed for uh, five constraints time, consecutive time. Five times they can appoint the same auditor, uh, maximum five years, no? Yes, maximum five years. So that's a, uh, so that's a normally happen. If the uh, owners or the shareholders are very happy with the particular auditor, for example, ABC company auditor is Ernst uh, So the, if the ABC company shareholders or owners are very happy with the EY performance, so definitely they can go with the EY for a law for maximum of five years. So it's normally happen. Shall be deemed to be reappointed by another meeting. It's normally happen. Unless sometime something happened, no? Other things. He is not qualified for appointment. 
this particular auditor is not qualified for appointment. Then you can ask questions. Oh, no, what's what, what, what does it mean? Uh, he is not qualified because the previous year the audit is done by the same auditor. In our case, ABC company auditor the previous year, the year of 2019, PY was the auditor. At the time, the person was qualified. Now he, he says that uh, he is not qualified. Uh, qualified. Not qualified meaning during the previous audit, the, they made some mistake. So that uh, evidence that. Uh, uh, the, the the particular auditor is not qualified. So such a way, the owners of the company or the shareholders, uh, if they fail such a way, it is a case not qualified. So definitely they will change the auditor. The next year they will change because they are not happy the performance of the auditor. So the owners, uh, equity shareholders, have the rights to change the person. Second one. A company passes a resolution, passes a decision at a meeting appointing another person to replace him as auditor. Yes, the company passes a resolution. When another things happen, a company in the annual general meeting, they make the decision that they want to change the auditor. They want to replace another person. It means that they want to change the auditor. So if the majority of the owners or or the shareholders uh, want to do uh, particular things, that's normally happen, no? That's normally, you know, that the majority people, if they want, they can do it. When the auditor has given the company that he doesn't wish to be reappointed. The final point says, the another uh, situation is there. The auditor has given to the company that he doesn't wish to be reappointed. This is something different. So the auditor himself or herself uh, communicated to the company. Actually, they don't have interest to continue with the particular company. So they are they actually they don't have uh, interest to do the audit of the particular company. Something happened because they, they, they may have some reasons. So these are the three situations. So they have to change the auditor. Otherwise, normally the same auditor continues for maximum five years. Okay. Then uh, this is another important one: auditors' fees and expenses. That is important one. No, the number of time we discuss. Uh, when in, in made my uh, video lecture, I already clearly explained. So how much the company, each and every company, pay. The audit uh, fees, no, is a very huge expense to the company. Even company do the audit, so the, we should clearly understand uh, the, that uh, auditors' fees and expenses. So, who 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 decide that particular fees and expenses? And the different situation, different people uh, can uh, decide the auditors' fees. So actually the company act section 155 says clearly what the people can uh, determine the auditor's fees okay the fees and expenses of an auditor of a company shall be fixed please understand that fixed mean the fees and expenses of an auditor of a company shall be fixed so because this normally happen no the before before they have an agreement uh, with auditor which in every company they normally have the discussion no? they don't know they normally have the detailed discussion with the particular auditor uh, they normally uh, discuss a lot of matters so finally they uh, agreed to the particular uh, they agreed to, to the particular amount in the agreement they normally in the discussion they come to the conclusion that uh, this much of amount we we can pay uh, as audit as, as an audit fee so that is a how the, they normally decide. So they, then they will normally have a written agreement that is a like contract. The contract that is normally called as the um, they normally has some the the engagement also itself has uh, consists this one written agreement uh, with the auditor. So the agreement they mention this much of amount they can pay. So that this so they, those, these these things normally happen before starting the audit process. Oh, yes, 
So this is uh, the previous discussion, this early discussion, they decide all the things, including audit fee. Suppose if they decided to pay five lakhs in the early exam with the ABC company, the EY auditor, in the discussion, they normally decided uh, to pay five lakhs for the audit, uh, for audit uh, as audit charge. So once they finish the audit of the particular finance officer, definitely they have to pay five lakhs only. Whenever they increase the amount by one rupee or reduce the amount by one rupee, if they decided to pay five lakhs, they must pay only five lakhs. That, 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 that's the meaning of it should be fixed one. No any uh, additional amount, there's a bonus extra amount. No, 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 no any discussion about that one that should be fixed if they decided to pay this amount such amount should be paid by the company okay if the auditor is appointed uh, at a meeting of the company by the company determines at the meeting so different different ways auditor can be appointed we, so, so far we discussed uh, the generally the auditor of the public company can be appointed by the order shareholders or equity shareholders or owners of the company at the annual general meeting, that's a normal situation. But some situation we discuss uh, casual vacancy time, the board of directors. So suppose board of directors fail to appoint, this normally goes to the register. So the three different situations are there. All the, these three different situations, uh, those people can uh, determine the audit fee. Okay, auditor is appointed in the meeting of the company. The meeting they can decide. The auditor is appointed by the directors. The directors can decide. So if the auditor is appointed by the register, the register can decide the fee. Generally, that's a meeting. The meeting in the or annual general meeting, the auditor shareholders decide how much they they will be appointed to pay um, to the audit. Yes, this is something related to the audit fees and expenses. Next one, we should know rights of the auditor. This is very important. What are the rights are there under the company act? As for the company act. The examining inspections, what are the uh, rights of the auditor as per the company of number of 2007? Then you should be able to give some uh, two, three points. No? What are the rights? First one says an auditor has access to all time, any time, to the accounting records and other documents of the company. That's normally the rights of the auditor. No? Any time, no? during the audit time, morning 8 to 5, 5, 5 30, 6, 6 p.m. No? Auditor uh, can uh, check any documents of the company. Yes, that's the rights of the auditor. One of the rights of the auditor. Second, when an auditor is entitled uh, to recover from, uh, uh, auditor is allowed uh, to recover from a director or employee of the company such information and explanations as he or she thinks necessary for the performance of his or her duties. If they can question anybody, any officers, any executives, they can um, ask uh, in the ask question about any 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 matters, any 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 issues. So that kind of rights also uh, hold by the auditor. So the, that's another rights. Another one, auditor is permitted. Auditor is permitted here yeah, to attend every meeting. So the company act is a user auditor can participate in every meeting of shareholders of the company. Yes, no any exception. Auditor can participate any meeting of the company, meeting of the shareholders. Then the, the auditor is permitted to receive the notice and communication that a shareholder is entitled to receive relating to a meeting of the shareholders. What the document received by the shareholders, all the documents can be um, received by the auditor of the company. So these are the rights of the auditor as per the company of number 7 of 2007. So finally the section number 163, 163 says the auditor's responsibility. Earlier one, the rights of the auditor, yes, this is a, the auditor's responsibility. So uh, my question, you can easily imagine what would be the Responsibility of auditor. Yes, auditor's responsibility is to make report to the shareholders. Yes. Report me, audit report to the shareholders on the financial statements audited by the company. 
but so that is only the responsibility of the auditor please keep in your mind what are the responsibility only one responsibility the auditor's responsibility is to make a report uh, submit the report audit report to the chairman that's a responsibility then that nothing okay yes so then these are the things we discuss under the chapter 3 audit of limited liabilities companies i hope uh, you understood um all the information clearly suppose you uh, have any questions so you can uh, mail me or otherwise you can um, put your question in the chat room in the lms okay students um, bye bye